Hi everyone, this is a retrospective review of a nearly eight year long program of 3D modeling of the geology and hydrostratigraphy of the bedrock of southern Ontario. This is likely the last presentation on this topic that we'll be making at this venue. I'd like to acknowledge that funding for the various phases of the project was provided by a nuclear waste management organization, the Geological Survey of Canada, the All Gas and Salt Resources Library, Ontario Geological Survey, and MITAX, a federal research funding organization. In 2015, the Geological Survey of Canada initiated a series of projects to construct three dimensional models of the bedrock geology and hydrogeology of southern Ontario. And in that time, three models have been completed and all have been released as GSC open files. The models are constructed using LeapFrog Works modeling software, 400 meter resolution. A fourth 3D model of delimitization patterns is being prepared as a test of protocols and issues associated with adding attributes within the 3D models of the model lithostratigraphic layers. 3D modeling provides a powerful tool for regional visualization of subsurface geological and hydrogeological relationships to support subsurface resource management. It eliminates many of the limitations of traditional two-dimensional mapping methods and is the logical next step in geological mapping. Now, it's only possible to do this where properly constructed, spatially enabled data sets are available. This project demonstrates the value of such data sets and illustrates and justifies the time and cost of data collection and management. These models provide a foundation and structure within which further geological models can be constructed as demonstrated by the 3D dolomite mapping example shown as part of this presentation. This slide is a traditional two-dimensional representation of the bedrock geology of southern Ontario. And this version includes some updates to the published uh, OGS digital bedrock geology map. There's 1,500 meters of shallowly dipping Paleozoic bedrock and 70 formations, which unconformably overlie crystalline metamorphic pre cambrian rocks of the Canadian Shield. This slide shows the location of our input data, which is comprised of 20,836 petroleum wells, stratigraphic tests, measured sections, three wells in Michigan, 30 control points. Uh, we've also incorporated digital subcrop and bedrock topography, Great Lakes bathymetry and regional faults, oil and gas reservoirs, salt leases and caverns, and there's been extensive QAQC edits of formation tops. The first model was a proof of concept with only three layers, uh, including the unconsolidated uh, drift, Paleozoic bedrock, and the Precambrian basement. The 3D print below is from the final model, but illustrates the simplicity of the initial model. There is considerable interest in this 3D printed version of the model, which was posted on LinkedIn on January 10th, 2022 with greater than 28,000 views and 400 likes. This is a regional view of the new 3D Paleozoic bedrock geological model uh, showing the bedrock formations coded in different colors and the legend for these formations uh, down the side. There's 53 Paleozoic bedrock layers represented on here, plus the Precambrian who stripped off the surficial geology. This is a stratigraphic chart of the Paleozoic bedrock formations in southern Ontario is used to guide the stratigraphic coding of model layers. Model layers represent individual formations or grouped formations where necessitated by data quality, quantity, or thin formations. The erosional profile of the subcrop edges is represented on the chart showing uh, frequent occurrence of carbonate capped questus. Of particular importance for groundwater movement are the occurrence of regional heliocarst horizons where carbonate strata were subarily exposed at erosional disconformities in the geologic past. The next few slides show examples of how the model can be used to visualize the subsurface geology. And this one here showing regional structures, the Chatham SAG, Michigan Basin, Appalachian Basin, separated by the Algonquin Arch. 
displaying the topography in connection with its underlying bedrock geology is a very simple use of the model. This slide just shows a buried uh, escarpment or cuesta uh, on the uh, Silurian Age formations of the Bass Islands Formation and Salina Group. This slide shows the surface of the Silurian Guelph Formation showing pinnacles, pinnacle carbonate buildups uh, in, on the surface. These are about 100 meters in relief above the regional surface. They form oil and natural gas reservoirs and are now used for natural gas storage. The inter-pinnacle areas between these uh, structures is a regional paleocarst that forms an important regional brine aquifer. The 3D model is particularly useful for displaying salt dissolution features with associated subsidence and collapse over top of them. In this slide in yellow, uh, we're seeing uh, the B salt beds of the, uh, that's the Salina group B salt formation. Uh, there's a gap over top of that where I'm not displaying the remaining formations of the Salina group. In green are the overlying Devonian formations. You can clearly see collapse structures and subsidence features over top of areas of dissolution of the B salt. In case you'd like to download the published 3D model and the publications associated with it, this slide just shows the links uh, to the model and the report. Development of a hydrostratigraphic model is supported by a variety of data. There's a water well database of the Ministry of Environment, Conservation and Parks. There's 160,000 wells that penetrate bedrock. The petroleum well database is, again, a principal source of data, just as it is in the lithostratigraphic model. We've compiled published hydraulic conductivity estimates, field observations, and drill core are a very important part of this process and chemical and isotopic analyses, for example, from uh, SCUS and scus -Aital. There are records for 27,000 petroleum wells in Southern Ontario, of which 15,600 wells have 35,000 water interval records uh, recorded in the Ontario Petroleum Data System. Now to convert from a lithostratigraphic to a hydrostratigraphic model, there are several challenges in making that conversion. First, we need to understand the regional hydrogeological framework, and which includes where is the groundwater, hydraulic conductivity, geological controls, you no know, uh, flow directions. There is a regional hydrochemical zonation of groundwater by depth, by water type. Uh, we want to know where the interfaces between those water types are, the base of the fresh water and the base of the sulfur water. We need to assign the lithostratigraphic units as hydrostratigraphic units. The hydrostratigraphic framework represented by the model is defined and described in detail in volume 48 of Geoscience Canada published in early 2021. This slide is a 3D data cloud of petroleum well water intervals coded by water type. You can clearly see the hydrochemical depth zonation. The gaps are regional aquitards. There are three hydrochemical groundwater regimes in the subsurface of southern Ontario. A shallow regime of predominantly bicarbonate rich freshwater in the glacial and region sediments at the contact with bedrock and in shallow karstic bedrock. An intermediate regime of brackish to saline sulfur and sulfate rich water in paleocarst horizons at depths of approximately 30 to 350 meters, and a deep water regime of ancient evaporated seawater dominated by dense brines in paleocarst horizons at depths greater than 200 meters with updip hydraulic gradients. This is a visual representation of the previous slide displayed on a scale geological cross section of southern Ontario. Shown in blue are the shallow freshwater and yellow, the intermediate depth sulfur water regime, and in orange, the deep basinal brines. Water movement is down dipped along paleocarst horizons in the shallow to intermediate regime and up dip along the same horizons in the deep brines. 15 hydrostratigraphic units have been identified as illustrated on this chart. HSU names are listed in the left column. The erosional profile of the bedrock formations is shown along the right. Seven of the hydrostratigraphic units are classified as aquifers. The remainder are aquitards or aquacludes. 
colors for the aquifers are as in the previous slides. Fresh water occurs in three shallow water aquifer systems. One in the surficial sediments, HSU2, in a contact aquifer at the sediment bedrock interface, and HSU3 in shallow karst developed at the subcrop edges of carbonate formations. In intermediate to deep subsurface, thin aquifers of brackish to saline sulfur water or brine occur in paleocarst horizons developed at disconformities at the upper surface of carbonate bedrock formations where they were exposed to subaerial weathering in the geologic past. This chart just summarizes the 15 uh, identified hydrostratigraphic units. Their color coding on here is by water type. Uh, again, blue is fresh water, yellow is sulfur water, and the orange is uh, brine. Uh, for each one of these, we summarize the lithology and the published hydraulic conductivity data. I won't go through this in any more uh, detail in this presentation. This is a regional view of our 3D hydrostratigraphic model looking north from Lake Erie and, and tipped up to the north on its edge. Uh, and colored layers on here are the principal aquifers in the subsurface. They're color coded by water type and the units in gray are all the aquitards. The next four slides are 3D views of the four principal confined bedrock aquifers in Southern Ontario. In each slide, the principal water type is color-coded. Orange is deep brine. Yellow is brackish to saline sulfur water at intermediate depths. And blue is fresh water at shallow depths. This first slide is the Lucas Dundee Aquifer, which is dominated by sulfur water, with fresh water in and near the subcrop belt. This is the Bass Islands Birdie Aquifer. It's the next deepest below the Lucas and Dundee Aquifer. You can clearly see the down dip gradation from shallow freshwater to intermediate sulfur water to brine in the deepest portions of the aquifer. This slide is for the Guelph Aquifer showing the hydrochemical zonation from a depth of approximately 700 meters to subcrop. The deepest of the bedrock aquifers is the Cambrian at 900 to 13 and even 1400 meters below the surface. It is entirely comprised of brine in southern Ontario, with the exception of a small outcrop area in the east, which is geographically and geologically isolated from the main body of Cambrian in southern Ontario. There are two maps shown here. The larger shows depth of occurrence of fresh water beneath the bedrock surface as reported in water wells. Areas of red, yellow, and light blue are the deepest intervals. Dark blue shows areas where fresh water occurs generally less than four meters below the top of bedrock. The smaller map shows interpretation of the areas of deepest fresh water as shallow inferred karst in the 3D model. We have been able to construct groundwater level surfaces for four of the principal confined bedrock aquifers in Southern Ontario. None of these surfaces are corrected for salinity. The example shown here is for the static level data recorded in petroleum wells for the freshwater plus sulfur water intervals. Brine data is excluded. The recorded water level is several tens of meters above the aquifer and locally is above the ground surface. Potential artesian flow of Lucas Dundee sulfur water to the surface is a drilling and environmental hazard in parts of Norfolk, Elgin, and Oxford counties, as shown here. Numerous petroleum wells with reported sulfur water levels above ground surface in this area. And the model shows large areas of potential discharge beneath Lake Erie and topographic lows in creek valleys. And this example is for the Cambrian Aquifer. Again, the groundwater level surface is interpolated from petroleum well static level data for the Cambrian Brine Aquifer. And in this case, the recorded water level is several hundred meters above the aquifer and locally is above the ground surface. There is enough water analytical data from the Lockport group plus the Salina A1 and A2 units to construct 
a groundwater salinity gradient map. I'm just showing you an example of that here. You can see uh, increasing salinity with depth from the subcrop belt. This slide shows a 3D view of oil and gas reservoirs in the subsurface of southern Ontario in the model, pink being natural gas and green being oil. The view is looking north and you're seeing all the reservoirs that have recorded production of oil and gas in southern Ontario. The Oil, Gas and Salt Resources Library in London has recently created a 3D print of the hydrostratigraphic model, which I've shown here. The red is still the Precambrian basement, the same as the uh, geologic model shown in the background. The gray colors are aquitards, which dominate the subsurface uh, stratigraphy of southern Ontario, and the clear colored layers are the regional aquifers. In case you'd like to download the published 3D model and the publications associated with it, this slide just shows the links uh, to the model and the report. And to give you a preview of progress on the next and probably the last 3D model out of this uh, series of modeling efforts is a 3D model of dolomitization in regional limestones of the Salina a1 carbonate and A2 carbonate. So this uh, study is in progress and what you're seeing here is the results of alizarin red staining of drill cuttings from 400 plus wells. This is legacy data that was acquired in 1991. This slide is from that same study and in this case I'm only showing you a percent dolomite in the A1 carbonate and the uh, Dolomite contour interval, just for your information, is 20%. And what you can see is dolomite halos in the A1 carbonate around and over uh, pinnacle reefs in the underlying uh, Niagara and Guelph formation. One final model in preparation by the GSC is a 3D surficial model, which covers 67,000 square kilometers of uh, Southern Ontario at 400 meter resolution. There's seven quaternary layers above the bedrock. The lower boundary utilizes the same bedrock surface as the bedrock models. It uses greater than 280,000 water wells, 33,000 geotechnical geoscience boreholes, local OGS 3D models, and 52 seismic profiles. In summary, two 3D Bedrock geological models have been completed and one 3D hydrostratigraphic model using LeapFrog Works modeling software, 400 meters resolution. A fourth model to demonstrate a test of protocols and issues with adding attributes within the 3D volumes of the model lithostratigraphic units is underway. These models can be viewed using free LeapFrog Viewer software. These projects illustrate the value of properly designed and maintained borehole data sets. And in fact, these models cannot be produced without these data sets. They provide new powerful tools for geological visualization and education, um, provide the framework for addition of geological and hydrogeological attributes, and uh, possibly also for numeric modeling. Thank you very much.